This is BT's developer portal at developer.bt.com. BT is the UK's leading telecommunications and network provider, and we also additionally serve customers across 180 countries worldwide. BT is a complex organisation. We've got a retail business selling fixed and mobile telecom services direct to people's homes and businesses. But we also sell our network as a wholesale product to other telecoms companies who compete with us in the retail business. So we're required to keep data about our wholesale business separate from the data for our retail business. And that includes information such as our API usage. So we use the Apigee platform for our API gateway. And we use different Apigee orgs to separate, uh, to keep this data separate. So one of our challenges as BT is to have a single login and to show all of our APIs alongside each other whilst providing backend integration into different endpoints in Apigee. BT also has three brands which have arisen as BT's grown through acquisitions. Um, we often have different backend systems behind these brands, so some of our APIs work for one brand but not for another. And we've set out to bring these three brands together under a single interface. This is our first Pan BT API developer portal, and it's been developed from scratch. We've previously had an API portal for our EE brand, and we've had to move all of the content and all of the users to this new portal as, as we've developed it. And some of our APIs are for internal use, and some are externally facing. And some of those that are externally facing are also monetized. And we've had to build rigorous access controls and authentication measures to control the exposure of our APIs. For example, access by BT employees is managed by our internal Active Directory. So if someone leaves BT, they have their access revoked automatically. Um, our API portal is targeted at multiple audiences and for all our business users, it's a lead generation tool providing uh, marketing and case study content to drive discovery and, and interest um, from business development audiences. Um, let's click here. Um, this is an example of a product page where we're giving a high level overview of the service. Um, of the key features and benefits and other supporting information. But as well as marketing needs, we also need to give our core developer audience information and the tools for them to create their own products based on our APIs. I can click on the links here to see the API specifications, but before I do, you can see how we've used these lozenges to show which product brands are supported by each API. Our API documentation is created to the open API 3 specification, otherwise known as Swagger. And this is actually part of a major project across our um, development community to agree new ways of working and standards of documentation. And the API portal has actually been a great catalyst for driving change across our organization. The specification can also be downloaded for use in other tools such as Postman. Um, and I should say that as well as just complying with the open API spec, we set a number of standards for our own implementation. Uh, for example, we need to make sure that um, every type for every product that we have and every resource that we have under a product, um, we're always including a description and always being really clear what that resource uh, is. We've used um, Redoc as the engine to render our specs, and this gives us a neat sort of three column layout. Um, I should say that we always create sandbox examples of our APIs, um, which are free to any registered user. And um, we've included in each specification description, a description of how to access each of the sandbox scenarios. Um, we also insist that our developers document um, the example requests and responses. So as well as there being a technical description of each of the fields and each of the response fields, et cetera, um, you can see on the right-hand column, there are different examples here. 
and you can look at how uh, the the request changes between them and curl version of it. Um, and and again for for the responses or error responses. Okay, so let's go and create an app. Um, creating an, an app is as easy as giving it a name and then choosing which products to add. So I'm going to call this um, test um, API the docs. I'm going to say test sandbox app. What they have to do is say, what do I want to add to that? Well, I'll add that, I'll add that. There's one called charge. I'll search for that charge. There it is. Add that, create the app. And um, I'm now actually able to immediately access this app. It's saying approved. All sandbox apps are automatically approved. And um, you can access your key and secret from here. OK. But one of the drivers for creating our portal was to empower the business teams to manage their customers' access to APIs and, and rate plans, and also to manage the approval of any production apps before they go live. Um, so account managers have this toolkit that allows them to assign themselves as the account manager for a user, change the privileges, um, manage the visibility of the APIs that they can access and also assign them a, an appropriate rate plan. Um, these processes used to be managed by completing spreadsheets, raising JIRA requests into our support teams, and it was prone to errors and could take a, a long time. So once we've set the, um, let me flip back to the other user. Once we've um, set their rate plans, etc. I can now click on rate plans and I can see that I've assigned this um, charge, charge a customer product uh, with a rate plan to this customer. So um, now when they navigate to my apps, they have access to the production environment and the relevant products that we've assigned them um, are available when they go to create an app. So let's just create that app. Let's call it um, demo API the docs. Um, let's just call this give it a description of demo. And you can see that what we've got here for our product and the associated rate plan is what we saw in the rate plan section earlier. Um, I'll add that and then I'll create my app. But once I've done that and different to the sandbox, um, the, um, the app's now sitting as pending can't actually access that this app and under credentials here you can see that the status is pending there are no um, credentials available so the account manager is going to receive a notification that one of their partners has created an app and they'll see a screen um, let me show you here's the account manager and I'm going to look for um, app requests I can see demo API the docs um, and it contains this product called Charger Customer with the rate plan. Um, it's documented here. And I can either approve um, or reject that, that app request. But additionally, for some uh, products, I should say, we automatically generate an onboarding form where the product team requires additional information uh, before approving the app. And we can get the system to generate that. Um, you don't have to approve it, of course until you've received that additional information from the customer. And so let me just refresh this page back to my developer's view. Um, once the account manager has approved the app, the user can then access the app using their key and secret. And here it is in their credentials. I'll also finish by saying that the portal also gives them access to analytics um, such as latency and transaction volumes. Hi, John. <laughs> so that was a bit of an abrupt start. <laughs> I didn't get to introduce the portal. And we're waiting for your colleagues, right? Yeah. So um, let me introduce them as they join. Abby's just joined us. Um, Abby, Abby is a uh, technical Hi. architect, amongst, amongst other things, responsible for our API gateway on, on the portal. 
and um, Sunin, who has many roles, but has taken the lead on our documentation standards and workflows for the portal creation. Hi, Sunin. And so uh, in the introduction, I would have been the one who would introduce John himself, who is senior product manager of the API platform. Um, so uh, British Telecom um, has a very diverse range of telecommunications, including wholesale services, international businesses as SMEs, um, each managed by a different division of the company. And uh, I understood that the key objective of the portal is to provide a shared view of these APIs across all the teams and to put the power into the hands of the business teams um, and reduce the load on the gateway support teams. But um, to create such a portal, uh, which is a complex solution, uh, usually this um, is pretty preceded or at least drives a systemic transformation. Like if nothing else, the API specification format, compliance, security. Um, in hindsight, what would you all uh, say were uh, or are the biggest challenges in creating such a pen business portal? I'm going to start. I'll, I'll start by saying start earlier. Um, and um, for what, everything that you've seen, there has basically been done start to finish in a, in a year. Um, so um, I would say one thing that we have found, we've, we've addressed it in um, a reasonably agile manner. We have had an MVP, we've had a second release, and we still have a number of key bits of functionality that we want to release um, as, as new versions. Um, I feel that some of the things we're doing later in the project are um, a, a sort of uh, go, going back over old ground that we did with our MVP. Um, so having that really, really clear vision right at the start, um, and as we were all sort of new to this, I don't think we had understood the impact of everything that might happen, especially once you bring in different divisions from different parts of BT. Um, and um, for, for ev every one person we brought on the project, they brought two, two different opinions with them. Um, Abby, perhaps? <clears throat> Um, yeah, I think uh, the, those were some of the, the key challenges, trying to get all the right stakeholders together, get them to agree. Uh, I, I remember workshops where we've, we've spent uh, half an hour talking about the, the titling of the menu items, basically. So it was, uh, you know, those were uh, the challenging bits. I think uh, the, the other thing was uh, we wanted to um, also build a backlog of uh, um, features that we wanted to introduce on the portal. And uh, particularly, there was a lot of demand for the kind of functionality where API keys are associated typically to a, a developer. We wanted to also make sure that it can be assigned to a team so that when uh, individual developers leave, that people don't have to change API keys and things like that. Uh, and, and these are all things that uh, we wanted to build out as we went along, actually. So those were, uh, those were the tricky bits, trying to decide what the MVP was and then trying to say what subsequent drop should be, actually, uh, and trying to get people to agree to that. So the audience is also asking questions. Um, let me read it quickly. Can you talk about the process of moving to open API and how the API portal drove that? Well, that would be a good one for some in. Yes. So basically, um, the, we already had plans to, you know, uh, move to open API specifications, uh, but since the introduction of uh, the API portal, it kind of accelerated those plans uh, because the Drupal 8, I believe, uh, had mainly support for open API spec and not smart docs, or it wasn't recommended to do the product documentation using smart docs. And open API spec seemed a, a great fit because it's standards based, it's structured, and you know it it fits in with the way that we want to do our documentation. It's put it to the fore, hasn't it? For the for the first time, you know there is somewhere because we've said this is a, as much a developer portal for internal people as external people. Um, you know, people have their own little confluence um, wikis where they store information about their APIs for their team and they haven't really been sharing it. And once we've 
sort of tease that out and say put put them in this shared platform all of a sudden they become available and everyone can see them and it starts to become uh it starts to gather that momentum hasn't it yeah absolutely and uh you know it just fits in with the uh agile objective of you know transparency and uh, consistency mm. all that we also use ci cd pipelines to push our documentation onto the portal yeah. so it ensures that you know it is consistent as soon as anything is updated it's it's available on the portal and it also stays uh, you know very close to the code so that any updates to code means that the developer or the designer makes changes to the documentation um you know as and when it uh, happens and i think it it was instrumental in in driving that change as well it's almost yeah. like a culture change among the developers right because they used to have different forms of documentation some people documenting it on on wiki pages and things like that some people writing documentation files whereas this was a much more consistent and we needed a machine readable definition as well of of the documentation oh, yeah. of of the api in order to publish it to the portal uh, and and so it was really important that anybody who wanted to push information into the portal they wanted their api spec on the portal it needed to be in a machine readable form and so you know using open api spec was absolutely key for that absolutely yes yeah mm -hmm. yeah so this and we're still also... discovering we're still discovering uh, you know new tools that allow us to kind of create uh, you know artifacts test uh, items and and uh, you know tests for for the api so you know it is it is it is the smart move to uh, move to an open api spec yeah, and there's a related question in the chat. I might as well answer that from from Brian Long. Um, that yeah, are we doing um, you know code first or or design first for the API specs? Um, we move from doing code first to doing design first. So we are using an API first. We define the Swagger file and then enhan enhance it as we go along. Basically, so we are doing that nowadays. Yeah, in fact, we are rapidly moving to an API first approach where the business yeah. actually thinks about you know rather than thinking about the back end. Uh, you know, um, changes. It thinks about how it can uh, create an API for for that product and uh, how it wants to actually uh, expose that to its partners. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, there's another uh, technical related question. Uh, are the sandbox services mocked or are they serving real responses from a lower? I've, I've answered that actually in the chat. Oh, you did? Yeah, we, we are serving mock responses. Um, yeah. We've got test environments where we can uh, send back real responses as well. I think there was another question earlier um, we might have missed. What yes, do we use for our conceptual documentation. documentation to support our API reference? I, I must confess I didn't quite uh, get that. What, what did that mean? But I, I, I'm guessing um, by conceptual documentation, you mean how do we explain the use cases for the API? Um, so what we do is we create some marketing collateral. So we publish the API spec. We try and document as much as we can because we like to have documentation as code. Um, we document as much as we can within the open API spec. But there's a bit of marketing collateral which shows the different um, uh, the different use cases, the different scenarios in which a particular API can be useful, useful, and we publish that as content alongside the API spec onto the portal. So if you go on to developer.bt.com, you can self-register with any email address, and you will be able to see some of that information as well. I would, I would add to that that um, you know we try to drive standards. We have driven standards for everything we do on the portal, and that was one of the challenges of having you know a global division, a wholesale division, an enterprise division, a consumer division. And we all, we just want to. They, everyone's got their idea of what a marketing page looks like, um, and and what it has to contain. And, and we've actually had to be quite strict. And we said, well, actually, I think there were six or seven sections. And I said, you know, every, everything that you want to say has got to fit into one of these boxes. And we've and we've set up a review process when people want to put new marketing content on the site. You know, I'll go through it and I'll say. That's that's not a feature. It's a benefit, or you know, that's that's just that's just waffle. It doesn't belong on this page, and and we will we will edit that and and collectively sign off on any marketing content. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. So central editorial is is necessary. It's a central control. What's really really important is that individuals can can do things. And given the guidelines of what you know that, that they should be producing. Um, they're given the ability to do that, and in fact, um, as per the the flows that uh, we were describing earlier, people can publish as far as draft up onto the portal. 
but it takes um, you know a, a group to come together, review that before the the editor uh, has the permission to publish um, and, and commit it to the life site. Mm -hmm. Did it have a, a a reverse effect? So, as in that the digital process has now had an effect on how things are used to done, even without the APIs. On, on how how the digital sorry how do you mean this is a bit of an abstract question right mm -hmm. so, uh, because um so when you go towards uh templating and and giving more formalized way more uh, overall format formalized um standards for how do you create these apis and how should they be published mm -hmm. uh, i assume that that has a a, a bounce back effect uh, on how things are actually done even if it isn't for publication yeah. Um, yeah, it, it is. It's an interesting one, actually. But, you know, more than anything, I think part of just communicating this, this stuff has just driven activities, you know, just just saying to teams, um, you know, this, this is how we do it on the portal, um, makes people think about, oh, we, we, we need to do that. We need, we need to make sure our product is there, um, whether they wouldn't necessarily have thought about Putting it on the portal as it's as it's a new a new thing for BT. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you very much. I hope it's going to be continuing a successful journey, and I'm hoping to hear from uh, the next iterations in uh, one of the next API the doc seasons. Lovely. Thanks very much. Thank you very. Thank much. you.